players look to have been working really hard in, in hot and humid conditions a lot of the time. So how, how impressed have you been with their work rate and their effort and their application during these sessions? I knew that the group was a good group and then to come here and then sometimes to have uh, uh, this hard condition because it was uh, very, very hot in the first day. And then you could see that they were training, especially the most difficult thing is when you go to the last part of the training session is when they are a little bit tired and then we want to run a little bit. So then you see that they are suffering, but they're still they are working hard and they're really pleased for that. And you can see from training, it's, it's been very interesting for, for us and for fans, Steve, just how hands-on you are in coaching. You know, you stop the sessions regularly, you communicate regularly with the players. Is that something that's always been part of your management or is that something you've, you've, you feel you've developed over the years? Oh, I said in some interview that I, I was a teacher in the school and then I, I like to coach, I like to, to work with the individuals, with group of players, with the whole team. I like to do it, I did it all my time and then obviously now it's uh, even more important with a new team, new players, they need to understand the way that you want to do things and it's just uh, this part of the, of the coaching plus the videos with all the staff uh, working together trying to uh, correct little things or encourage them to do things that is uh, a key part of uh, our way to, to coach players. A welcome sight from training footage for Evertonians has been seeing JP Gabamine in training. So from what you've seen of the player so far and what you know about JP, how important can he be for the team and what qualities can he offer the squad this season? Yeah, you said before, you have to watch the, the player and uh, he was not um, very lucky with the injuries and now it's just uh, he's showing his potential. So it's too early, so we need to see players doing the games, you know, proper games. Now we have a couple of friendlies, but we have to see uh, with an opponent, with a, a, a strong team, see how they react. But in terms of his attitude, in terms of his, his physicality, he's doing well. And I'm really pleased because he's one of the players that uh, uh, he can be, I wouldn't say a revelation for us, no? but uh, an important player if, he's, uh, if he continues progressing in the way that he's doing now. How important are tours like this for clubs like Everton in terms of getting fans in North America and South America involved because they support Everton and also trying to increase the club globally? Yeah, it's really important to have uh, fans everywhere. That means that uh, you are getting bigger and bigger. And obviously here, uh, the fans, uh, they have the tradition of the Premier League uh, teams coming here. But maybe Everton needs to be here uh, more times. And then that is the reason why this year was so important. So when we were talking about this opportunity, I said, yeah, I think it's... Uh, is fine. Obviously, the COVID-19 has created some issues, but uh, we are in a, a safe environment. We are fine. And then uh, I think that the fans will appreciate to see the team here. And hopefully, we can do well on the pitch. That will be the main thing and we can attract more fans. And looking to on the pitch, it's the first game up on Sunday and the Colombian Giants Millenarios up first. So what kind of test do you think they can offer your team? Yeah, Millenarios is a, is a good team. They have good tradition and I think, uh, obviously, I think they have already played a couple of games, so that means that physically they will be a little bit ahead of us, so we will see how can we manage. But uh, I have confidence that for us it's just another test, another challenge, and then we have to do well. But uh, especially in terms of understanding of the game and, and the attitude of the players. After, if you can win the game and play well, then everybody will have uh, uh, more hope that it will be a great season. But uh, I have enough experience to know that this is uh, the time that you need to see uh, your players and especially players that maybe uh, they were not playing or you were not uh, watching him so much because still we have three, four players, uh, uh, relatively four at the moment, but they are an important part of the team and they are not here. So we are early uh, in the precision and we are missing some players, but still I have confidence that we can do well. You mentioned about some new faces in your in your squad, but it's also been a, a, a new face in the, in your backroom staff as well. And Jamie Harley, who you worked with before at Newcastle, and when we spoke to Jamie, he said how much he enjoys working with you and your backroom team because he likes the structure that you put in place. So when you hear things like that, does it kind of justify your approach and and why every facet of a, of a football operation is so important to you? Yeah, I think Jamie is a is a great professional, and then. When we went to Newcastle, he was already there, and little by little we were, especially Paco, that is the one that is working with him, changing a little bit the way to approach uh, the training sessions and 
because we like the fitness coach also to work on the pitch with the ball. So it's more common in Spain. Here sometimes it's just without the ball and in Spain it's also uh, with the ball. The players, they like that. But you have to be very precise with the, the load of the training session, the intensity, the time, the time to recover, all these things. And I think it's a learning process for him and he's uh, happy with that. And he's working very hard uh, with Paco and really pleased because uh, you have someone he knows the English mentality, he knows uh, the, what the players are uh, happy to do and at the same time he's uh, doing things in our way. And three new players in the past week and another, another familiar face from, from your time at Newcastle, albeit it was, it was a brief stint but he had a really productive spell, so Andros Townsend. Uh, what qualities can he bring to this squad? Some people they don't know if he's right footed or left footed. What means that? means that he can deliver with his left foot, with his right foot, he can play on the left, on the right, and uh, always I said that we were looking for someone that could make some crosses. So we have a, a striker that uh, can be very dangerous in the air. So if you have uh, the right uh, deliveries, he will score goals. And Andros is a player that can pass players, can beat players, can make crosses, and also is very good with uh, set pieces. So the corners or free kicks is quite good uh, with the delivery. So I think he can give us also experience. So when we spoke to Andros on the day that he signed, he said about how you made him more of a all-rounder in terms of his abilities as a winger. He said he, he got the defensive duty side of his game. How important is that quality for you in a player who's someone who is prepared to do all the work? Yeah, the wingers are players that they need to run a lot. They have to go up and down all the time, depending on the system, but the, normally they have to work also a little bit in defence. But the, the main thing for me with him is just to be sure he can make delivery. So it's more about what he can do in attack that the, what he can do in defence. He has to help the team in defence, for sure, like everyone. But the, the main thing for me is that how he can uh, go in the final third and then pass players, big players, or make crosses, uh, to be sure that we are stronger also on the right side. So it's very clear on the left side with, uh, with Charlison and uh, Lucas Digne. The team was uh, making a lot of crosses and was a threat. On the right side, a little bit less injuries, so missing maybe a specific player in this uh, position, I think Andros uh, can help with this. And another important factor that Andros said was how much he wanted to sign for Everton, how he knew it was a privilege to play for the club and also the fact that he was desperate and hungry to show you that he can be a part of the first team. So is that mentality very important to be amongst the whole squad for you? Yeah, he was, he was very ambitious. When I was talking with him, he has a couple of, uh, to be fair, three options. And then he was waiting, so uh, I would like to stay in the Premier League. Everton is a great challenge for me. And then I want to go even back to the national team if it's possible. So he was just uh, uh, thinking that he could improve. He could uh, still uh, give us something and then play better football. Uh, so that is uh, very positive for us. So to have someone that has the experience at the, at the moment and also still he wants to improve, he wants to be better and he wants to come here so that is really important. And uh, what I wanted is to be sure that we have something that uh, could guarantee if you have injuries or you have problems that you guarantee that you have a, a balanced squad. And after that, uh, trying to be more ambitious and trying to, to look for uh, more options and uh, maybe uh, play that they can make the difference. But uh, to be sure that players that they wanted to stay here and they wanted to do well for Everton Football Club. And in Asmir Begovic, how significant was it to get a goalkeeper of his experience? Yeah, also it was an important thing. Obviously, we know that we have a big form here that has done really well now in the, in the Euros and he will have a lot of confidence. So to bring someone with the experience that he could challenge and at the same time he will understand that if he has to wait a little bit, he can do it. He can be a good example for the others. He can help with the, uh, this mentality that uh, he has because he was also in top side. So I think it's a, it's a good addition. And uh, hopefully he can push a little bit the uh, big for them both. They can be really good and uh, hopefully we cannot see them during the season. It means that uh, we are not conceding too many goals. And in Damari Gray we have a Premier League title winner who's only just turned 25. So how valuable can he be to the Everton squad? It was similar to the idea of uh, Townsend to have someone, to bring someone that could be playing in the wide areas, even uh, Damari can play in the middle. But at the same time someone that still is young and he has uh, the ability, the pace, 
the quality that he can make the difference uh, during the game. So my job is now keep pushing him in the nice way to be sure he's more consistent. He knows that, he knows that, and then he wants to also to impress. So these two players, uh, with uh, obviously Bego is a different uh, kind of player because he will be keeper and then for his experience, but these two players, they can uh, give us something that maybe this team was missing the last year and hopefully both they will have uh, this desire to do well and we help the team. Was a pacey, skillful winger, winger like Damari one of your priorities for you, for you and Marcel Brands when you when you first came to the club to get a player of those qualities? Yeah, it was uh, very clear this idea to have someone with ability, with pace, and uh, someone that can change the game. So uh, these players, uh, they need to be consistent, and normally the wingers they have uh, this problem. They they can be really really good, sometimes disappear. With him, I think uh, one of the challenges is to be sure that he can give us. Uh, something extra, something different in, in some games and the only thing that I can see from that is uh, positives.